and welcome back to my world of food again thanks for returning if you've been before hope you're enjoying what you're seeing and so part of the traditional Christmas build up is Christmas markets that are becoming ever more popular every year and one of the most popular in the whole of London is the South Bank Market and so today we come down where you can get lots of different little products for Christmas, presents, little gifts, things for your trees but also they do a lot of food and have a lot of street food stores so we're going to see what it's like hope you enjoy and thanks for watching Sleigh bells ringing, diamonds blinging, carols singing, favorite season. Sleigh bells ringing, diamonds blinging, carols singing, favorite season. Walk along Hungerford Bridge and it'll lead us to the South Bank. We've got the Royal Festival Hall there. I'm not just behind that tree, it's got some walls. You've got MI5 are probably watching us as we're watching them and you find boats on the river you've got the old London bus in the distance and this is Waterloo Station so the trains will be coming in and so we'll have a little look and see what's happening it looks very busy so I presume that's a good sign let's have a start a little walk opposite Westminster and in the distance we have Big Ben if anyone's come here looking for him they're going to be very disappointed as Big Ben actually is the clock the bell I believe in the clock tower we have the river boats we have the ticket office for the London Eye uh, it's quite a building and it goes up quite high so you get a great view of London and I think you'd have quite a way to get in today it seems quite busy so we'll start a little walk now and you've got the gift shop which probably sells outrageously expensive goods souvenirs now as you can see lots of people today it's freezing cold but it's lovely and sunny so it's probably quite deceptive you look out the window and you think it's really nice and then when you get out there it's quite a shock got lots of little shops along the way little stores so we'll take a little look at them as we go by them and I'll tell you what's in there have a little ice cream van but I think he's doing hot dogs as well because you would have to be very brave to want an ice cream on a day like this it's freezing and especially going along by the river as well it's very cold now got some nice buildings on the other side this is very traditional oldie worldy part of London I think these are quite old these buildings not sure when they're built in the distance then we have Hungerford Bridge and then Jubilee Gardens which is probably very nice in the summer not too many people sitting out having picnics today they always run lots of boat rides Uber boats just like a hop on hop off service then the other side we have the pub on the Thames which is like a pub set in an old boat which is moored at the side of the river it's a very nice part of town but the only trouble is it does get very cold with the wind coming up but it, on a nice day there's nothing as nice as a nice boat ride now we have a little fun fair ride so everyone's on the horses ready to go around and three pound a ride so not too bad for London prices. stores selling burgers the steam's coming out so they're nice and hot so you can see they're freshly cooked then over here we got Beltane and Pop which is 
mulled wine, spiced cider and hot whiskey. And as you can see by the queue, much in demand today. Now, we have between the bridges, which I believe is a bar with a big beer garden. So again, lots of people queuing up to get in one of the bigger attractions in London. And lots of little stores. So winter warmers, which has got a lovely Christmassy theme. And then doing mulled wine, lager, Guinness Prosecco and Bucks Fizz. Then Applebee's fish. So this is a the fried fish. Doing fried fish. And it's doing fish wraps. Then we have Polish deli in London. And they're doing the traditional Polish sausages, which are always very tasty and always very popular. Cooking them fresh in front of you. So you see them getting cooked, so you know they're fresh, they're not sitting there all day long. And that's large sausage in a baguette, eight pound. Two sausages in a baguette, eight fifty. So well worth getting a couple of sausages. Now you have Dutch pancakes here. So again, always popular at these markets, cooking the pancakes there at the back, right in front of you. Now we have Melt Smiths here, classic cheese, onion, jam, cheese blend, roast ham and mustard, and they cook them, toast these right in front of you on the grill. There we have a shop then selling vintage signs so if you're looking for something for a Christmas present you can get a little sign there and then these are very attractive the man there selling stars they're lit, lit up and very nice for a present you can stick them in your house uh, on a Christmas tree very decorative for Christmas so you get your star your light cord and your LED for 25 pounds so it's a good idea for a present for someone Tea, uh, tea and coffee, you got your Lulin tea and coffee, uh, different varieties, and next to it you've got the sweets and brownies, warm brownies, here's six pounds, and then you've got your choice, you've got your brownies, your donuts, and different cakes there, cookies two pounds, three for five pounds. This one that's very popular, the duck shed and they do British Christmas quacker, slow roasted duck, crispy brie, bacon, pig and stuffing, cranberry, bacon jam, Vietnamese duck, slow roasted pulled duck, green chili jam, pickled carrot, French duck and big new vegan Vietnamese duck. And it's very popular, big crowd to get the food there. The other side we have mulled wine, and that's 550 Prosecco 550. And we'll try and keep going through the crowd. So oh my dog, so looks to be a sausage hot dog store. I think because it's so cold, everyone's wants food today just to keep warm. So we are now so we got a little drink. Stall again. I, I think it's more of the mulled wine. Everyone seems to be on the mulled wine at the moment. So it's very nice in the old type of car, type of van thing. Pale ale 570 for a pint, mulled wine 550, red and white wine 590. And it's very nice, old traditional style restaurants with outside seating. As you can see, there's not many people queuing up to sit outside today. It's cold, and however bad it is, you're not going to sit outside. Your meal will probably be gone cold by the time you sit down to eat it. But in the summer it's probably a great place to eat. Cold iguanas. And so it's a Latin American theme with Brazilian, Cuba, Mexico, Argentina, different dishes from the different South American countries, and starters and tapas. We have another one, Le Pain Quotidien. Not very good on the French, so don't blame me. 
again, very busy inside, not a lot of people outside. Fresh, organic, honest food, and very busy inside. So on the left we have the South Bank Centre, not quite sure, I think it might be cinema, and probably does events like that. Then we have a little shop here, South Bank Centre shop, selling all Christmassy type of stuff. And then Côte Brasserie. It looks like someone sat there because there's a couple of cold coffees sitting on the table. But I think everyone's going inside today. Too cold to be outside. Now burgers, local beers. You got big burgers. Now it's called Honest Burgers. They do rosemary salted chips. So the local special. Beef, smoked bacon, Waterloo cheese, garlic pickle, red onion and baby spinach with chips, £14. And I believe they do a burger with chips, £10. Now we have a dim sum and cocktails, taking it back to the Chinese theme. And quite popular inside. All nicely bright, probably decorated for Christmas. Uh, doing very well. And now on the left we have a, I suppose you'd call it a food court. We have tea, bread, brownies, iced tea, latte, tea and hot chocolates. And this side we have winter warmers, honey, lemon and ginger, hot spiced apple, fresh apple, ginger blended with fresh spices. That's the ideal for what people want today. So all the ingredients are there and they're doing it nice and fresh in front of you. And there's an example of what they're selling. Now we move on to, we've got here wine, Prosecco and Bobbly and more mulled wine again. Always popular today in the cold. Now we move to Korean. So we've got authentic Korean barbecue and burritos. Spicy pork, bulugu, boiled duck chicken, baby map, burrito wrap, rice box, and spicy tofu. And that's all at the front. And then they're cooking it at the side. There, yeah, so it's all nicely cooked. There, yeah, so they're cooking it right as you can see. It's so all nice, fresh ingredients. So you can have a menu, choose one type and different prices for according to the size. <laughs> now, what have we got here? Pasta, the other side. We've got pasta. That's the menu. Tortellini, ricotta, spinach, with butter and sage, seven pound. And then spiritual dinner. A diner. Then we have waffles here. So fruit skewer, chocolate and toppings. And you heard. So there's all the ingredients there and your waffles. And then they'll do prepare that for you while you sit and while you stand and wait, not much seating here. And then yeah, some chimneys. My kids are hungry. The Asian comfort food. Chicken and prawns, Shang Jan Bows. Fried dumpling, baguettes with choice of pork, chicken, tofu, vermicelli, um, noodles, rice, choice of pork and chicken again, and tofu. And then we have the Polish deli. Polish delis are doing very well at the moment. All nice, the sausage is all getting prepared again. Very, very popular because it's good value for what you get. You know, it's nice, fresh, they're very tasty, and just as you can see from the size of the sausages, the good value for what you get through there. Pork sausage in the baguette, eight pack. Now we have some more food down here. Biryani, samosas, and then, yeah, 
Very nice, lamb samosas. Oh, nice. We got a mix of different foods. Nicely being prepared. And then broody chicken and spice. It's the New Orleans now. So again, you got you know a real good selection of different flavors, different foods from around the world. And there's my just ordinary bar. Now, so if you're not so much into hot food, but just into the donuts and the cakes, got a great selection of donuts there, cakes, cookies, red velvet cookies, raspberry cookies, lots of nice fresh donuts, lovely donuts, nice big donuts for your money, and all different cakes. I believe they're the Polish, the Nata. And now let's go and see what we have here. So, special fried rice. So, examples of the meals here. And again, cooked here in front of you. And then there's dining areas to sit down there. And you can sit, you can get a beer, you can sit down. And then up on the chairs, you've got more. So you can have a little sit down there. This would probably be lovely on a hot day. Maybe not today. Now we have slow cooked Venezuelan food. So it's definitely a variety everywhere you look. Different foods from different countries and all in very popular. Now on this side we have Thai food. We've got the Thai food there prepared. And then more traditional a steak and chips. So Holly got a great variety of foods from different countries. Steak and chips is the popular one from this country and it's doing well. well there's a great selection of street food. We also have some restaurants here. Wagamama, which is packed out, they're queuing to get in. And it looks very enticing and Lots of people there today. We have another one then called Strada. That's good. So there's quite a little range along the front of the restaurants. Nice lighting now. It should probably be better when it gets dark, but still nice. Lovely views of the river with little cruises going down that you can jump on. It'll take you down for about an hour and come back. And so we're away from the stalls a little bit now. So we've got Foyles the bookshop and then Prot a Manger. I hope you like the French. Yeah, I've been practicing. So let's see what else we've got now. So we got this is nice, the trees. Got little lights on them. I hope it comes out well. Be nice after dark. These lights, so you've got orange, then you've got purple lights, green, and more purple. I think they must have run out of inspiration to what they could put on that last tree. Then you've got little different foods, slices to sell in pizzas, and then feel good food, which is called giraffes. So I don't know how the giraffes would feel about eating giraffes, but. I don't think they'd feel very good. Then you've got the South Bank Centre. And then you've got one of what would be the equivalent of a train station, but for boats. On the right then, you've got fish and chippies served all day. And it's not very busy at the moment. It's probably all part of the giraffe. Yes, yeah, all the giraffe one. So at least that give the giraffes a break. So then you got the festival pier. So that would be a hop on riverboat service. And you can just get your boat. But I think they also do boat trips there as well. So probably once every hour or so you can hop on a boat. Totally different. We got the skateboard park where you can get up, do tricks. So it's quite good this. It's all designed for you to do your stuff in safety and 
looking at something for people to do. They always say about kids having nothing to do and then causing trouble. Well, they definitely got something to do here and it's good, it's been well supported. It's not costing anyone any money. And so people are doing their tricks, uh, trying to do the tricks sometimes, maybe. Not so successful that time. This is nice, you got nice seating, nice view of the river, get your food, get your drink, and you can just sit down and eat. I think the heaters are, or maybe they're not on, but they probably put them on there. Solar domes, so I suppose it's like having your own little private room in a restaurant. You can go in and order your meal, and they bring it out to you. And you sit in your little dome. I believe I think there's ten people can sit in a a dome at any one time. I oh, hear we heart ah, is a bit of it now. Jimmy's Lodge and Globes festive menu. Book your own private. Snow glow for up to 10 people and enjoy a three course meal overlooking the Thames. Choice of starters including duck, pistachio, terrine, roasted carrots, and grumolata salad, followed by our signature fondue and hot steaks on a stone. So visit jimmyspopup.com to find out, or you can ask at the bar what's available. And that's what it looks like, and you get a little fake fur at the back to keep your back warm and you can go in and Japan order. 2021 a hundred years of Japanese cinema you've got the National Film Theatre there then you have a riverfront bar and restaurant and again lots of outdoor seating but unfortunately not many people sitting outside lots of people sitting inside and on the other side we have, I don't know what we have, so let's go and investigate. I think it looks like it's, uh, oh, they've got comic books and second-hand books for sale. So you can browse and see if there's any book that catches your eye. And then buy that. How to avoid a climate disaster by Bill Gates. I think he knows all about disasters. And he may find out soon what a disaster. Past the National Theatre. And there's a little sculpture then outside of two women. I don't know what they're doing. London Pride. Festival of Britain. This is probably done for the Festival of Britain in 1951. And, yeah, I don't know. Not being an art lover myself, I'm not so sure what it is, what it's about. But As we walk it's... down, we have St Paul's Cathedral, and that little shiny thing on top of that building is where the Fire of London started. And there's a nice smell coming from this little silver caravan thing. And so got the churros with Nutella and there's a nice smell coming off that and it's all nicely fresh made sundaes I don't think there's so much of the ice cream today but we've got donuts hot drinks hot dogs and so good variety because there's not as much food down this end there we have the the new London against the old London on the other side of the road. This is the Queen's Wharf. Nicely decorated street lamp. Gabriel's Wharf. Now, because the tide's in, a few people walking down on the beach, <laughs> if you can call it the beach, not a lot of sand, lots of stones, lots of rubbish. A few little restaurants, so we have Marsha for the love of chicken. So I presume they sell chicken. Either that or they love the chickens and they won't cook the chickens, it's something else. So then we have different areas, Mexican, cheese. 
Gabriel's Wharf shop. Eat, drink. Let's have a walk down there, see what's going on. Have a little look in. Uh, this is Gabriel's Wharf. Wharf, which says you can shop, eat, and drink. So, little shops here. So let's find out about this Marsh's chicken. Uh, so they do sell half chicken poached in brine and oven roasted. They do burgers, sides, and desserts and small plates. Then we have Hola Locomole Mexican Street Food. Then the Big Melt Toasty Shack, 100% British cheese. And there's a little clothes shop then. Well, I think it's a clothes shop, it's selling all sorts. It's selling scarves from football teams. It might be a second hand shop more like. Heads Rule Hearts, number eight. Yeah, again, which I believe is a second-hand clothes shop. Then we have the pickle posts, nicely decorated. Ah, and they do pickles inside, and they have a little pickle pickup, which I presume you can put your bottles in. That's very quaint, that. Hello, got the, hello sir. The pickle post. I'm just there to take pictures of anything selling food today. Oh, marvellous. Yeah. Well, we're the pickle paws. We sell oh. lots of pickle to people you love. People you care about. And it's completely free courtesy of Branston Pickle. Yeah. All right. That's very interesting. It is, yeah. You do your pick a pot of pickle. You've got chunky or small chunks. And you take it over to a Christmas card. You just decide who you're going to send it to. And then uh, you send it off. And then get it on uh, Friday or Saturday. Oh, very nice. That's yeah. a good idea. It's, uh, and like Branston Pickle sponsor this. Uh, That's right, Branston support Pickle. Support that. Event by the Hotel uh, Pickle Post. That's good. It's nicely decorated as well. Isn't it? Yeah, it's lovely. So now we have a very colourful art gallery. It's very nice. Skylark Galleries. Art direct from the artist. That's a nice little picture. Rabbits and I think believe fox or a cat. In the window, and then another clothes shop. Then is it new? It might be second hand, I'm not quite sure, and I don't know. <laughs> I hope it's if it is new. Sorry for calling it second hand. Then we have a little jewelry shop here, and that's Sue Gallery, which I presume is handmade products, maybe by Sue. Then we walk back and we have the Lemon Beach Club. Eat, drink, lime. Not many people are on the beach today. Oh, good idea, I see it. Now, so they got the sand there. So it's like a beach club, but it's definitely not beach weather. Summer, I could understand if that was packed out. Oh, and in fact, it increases here to the other side where you got more sand. It's just like Copacabana Beach without the sunshine. As we walk along, got lovely views of the buildings on the river and the city of London. And there's the Oxo building. And I'm not quite sure there's one beside it, but I haven't a clue what that is. We passed the food sections at the moment, and now we're into the arty section. So we've got the Oxo Tower with oh, this lovely picture of an elephant and more elephants there. Sketch for survival, auction live now. That's all pictures. It might be raising money for the animals in Africa, hopefully. Then we have a coffee shop here. So we go along. Gelato and sorbet. Don't think they'll be doing too much of that today. Lots of coffee. I think they'll be doing that. Things with a musical theme like little guitar cases and little drum cases. And for a little present. And little dinosaur heads. Oh, yeah, I don't know what they are. And then 
come to another coffee shop only eat the best organic coffee and donuts, tea, milk and American now we're at Blackfriars Bridge and we're crossing into the city of London trains coming into the station of Blackfriars the building with the purple is the GPO Tower that used to be the biggest building in London our tallest building in London there's the police, I don't know what they're looking for maybe a boat that's double parked the tallest building in London. I believe the Shard now has that title. And it's so cold now, it's starting to get hot. It's near the top, but bear with me. We're gonna keep These going. barriers were put there because a couple of years ago someone tried to run people down with a car on one of the bridges. So obviously that protects you and then you've got the barrier in the centre so no one can get across so they can keep it pedestrianised and you don't have to worry about any van or car mowing you down anymore which is quite good when you're holding a camera as you don't see anyone coming so you've got lovely views of the architecture of old London and then we have a nice view of the river now we have the City of London School where I believe some very famous people used to go I believe Winston Churchill was a pupil and I think even Shane McGowan of the Pogues was there for a couple of weeks before they threw him out now we have a statue of somebody Let's see who he is. So, we don't know who the hell he is. So, J. Stewart Johnson, who's American. Don't know what he does. Don't know who he is. He's obviously a bit famous, but not that Cyan famous. Cyan Hall, formerly Cyan College, Theological Library, which was founded in 1630. So. It's been here a few years, this one. Lovely decorations. Lovely glass windows. Lovely decorated. Now, let's see what it looks like from this side. Not a lot to see from this side other than this another stained window. The sun's setting in London, London eye in the distance, plane just taking off from the City of London Airport. And it's getting very wintry looking now. But we've had a good day so hope you enjoy it and it's been a nice day out even if it'll take me a week to defrost when I get home far side of the river we've got the South Bank Market and as the sun goes down the lights will go on and hopefully you get some nice pictures of London in the dark and there's a little seagull who probably wishes he would make a statue of him but he got a lovely spot for the night and he's all set up for the night although it might be a little bit on the cold side past some buildings then and the river's starting to get a little bit cold now a little bit chilly but it's nice it's a lovely spot for people to come and lovely views some of the nicest views anywhere of any city <laughs> this is a very oldie worldie it's a police public call box so you could call the police from here 
now if you call them they're not going to come anyway so it won't make any difference to you but it's probably why it's no longer operational. Here's a little remembrance flint where people it looks like people from the different boating probably navy and boats and I don't know they call them regiments I'm not so sure what the navy called them submariners we will remember them borrowing furnace somewhere it looks all submarines seems to be yeah it seems to be uh, something for the submarines because every single one of them looks to be Middlesex submariners and it's a plaque in memory of those I presume from the other oh, submariners who lost their life in the First World War so they obviously do a oh, and the Second World War so they obviously do that for Remembrance Day to remember them all the people who died in the wars this is a very interesting this is to mark the boundary of the city of London and you'll find there's dragons all over the city and if you ever watch a guy called Michael Tazarian, it's very interesting on the subject of dragons. And if you ever get a chance, I'd definitely give him a, a watch on YouTube or read one of his books. It's very interesting because the city of London, dragons aren't meant to exist, so why are they have monuments to dragons every Victoria Embankment? And just behind us, there's a boat called the Wellington, which I'm not sure had they turned it into a pub. I think it may well be, maybe in a pub or a restaurant. Not quite sure. Now, I'm not sure if something's happened in London. There's lots of police flying around, and now there's the helicopters flying around as well. So I'm not sure if something's happened today. We'll find out on the news later on. And here we have the yacht, which according to the sign is London's premier riverside restaurant and events venue. So situated opposite Temple Underground Station and just across the road and you come to the Temple Pier and the yacht is moored just beside that. I was planning on staying until it got dark to pick up the lights but it is getting so cold now and it's to the point of not being pleasant and <laughs> it's hard to think what to even say on that cold so I think we'll call it a day. I think this is no it's not this may well be London Bridge or Embankment and that's where my station is so I think we may call it a day but I'll keep talking until we get into the now station. Now we have something called Cleopatra's Needle this was presented by someone in Egypt after I think we helped them in a war or a fight or something like that and they presented it to us. I think there's a few of them around the world. I think there's one in New York. Right, yeah, that looks very nice. You could be back in Egypt. And yeah, it was erected at Heliopolis by the Pharaoh. So, sorry, <laughs> it's getting so bloody cold. I can hardly read this. So, Inscriptions read nearly two centuries later by Ramesses the Great. They were removed during the Greek dynasty to Alexandria, the royal city of Cleopatra. It was there elect, erected in the 18th century of Augustus Caesar BC 12. And it's very historical, very Egyptian, and Stuck here right in the centre of London. Yeah. 
Uh, it definitely doesn't feel very Egyptian here at the moment. So let's just plow on. I'm getting nearer to the station and I can't say I'm too unhappy. It must be freezing. London I River Cruise to be sitting on the top, which I was a couple of weeks ago. And I think it's far colder today. Well, here's the bridge that's going to take me to my final destination. The underground yeah, Another train. one of these dine-in boats. Two in London. This one's quite busy at the moment. It's actually quite nice. They've got nice decorations on it. And people are sitting having lunch or dinner. And then as you go down, they've got the Christmas decorations all put up. You've got the London Eye in the distance. You've got the South Bank all lit up on the far side. And then you've got the views of the City of London. So it's a very good place to be parked. Oh, Maud, I think is and now we're on Hungerford Bridge, heading back for the underground station. South Bank Hall, uh, Royal Festival Hall, and you got the London Eye. I think the London Eye stopped now. It's not going anymore. So I think everyone's had their rides on there. South Bank's all nicely lit up. And then you've got the City of London in the distance. Oh. And I think that's, I don't know what bridge it is. Might be Waterloo Bridge, not quite sure. I think it is. And then I think that might be the Shard. Again, not quite sure. And so as we head back, Take one last view of the river and the buildings. Yes, it's been a good day. So, you know, a very good place to visit. Lots of places to eat. Great selection of food from all different countries in the world. And, you know, thoroughly recommended. Haven't actually seen that much. You know, if you're coming here for the buy a little present or anything and I think there's been a great selection so I think it's mostly if you were coming here for the food but it's been a good day and hopefully can get a train home now now thanks a lot for watching please subscribe as it gets these films out to more people and really helps it doesn't cost you anything to do it so you can just press the subscribe button and we'll keep making more tomorrow night now we're going down to do a little tour of selvages selvages is one of the finest stores in london one of the old traditional stores so we'll be going down to see what they've got on offer for christmas and then they've got a little market the lads are happy to have a good day skating and so we'll go down then and I believe there's a little market at the back of it which sells all food and everything so we'll have a little crack at that see what that's like and also coming up soon gonna do a little food we'll do products that for Christmas so we'll do comparisons and check to see what ones are the best give recommendations and see if we can help you we'll tell you all about how to do pick a turkey how to cook it how to stuff it there's lots coming up in the next few weeks so keep watching and again we've got another trip to Harrods coming up we're going to do John Lewis at Christmas so plenty to see plenty to do and please subscribe it does help the building just starting to light up nice little view over london as the lights start to come on if it wasn't so cold i would have stayed another bit longer but it's just too cold i'm freezing and i just want to get home 
and a mulled wine isn't going to do it for me. Sleigh bells ring.